welcome to Control Delete Tutorials. My name is Jason and today we're going to be continuing some previous uh, videos. Uh, where we left off on part four was uh, we had created some uh, movement controls for our tank. So I'm just going to go ahead and play through and make sure if, uh, if this is the first video that you've seen, go back and check out the other four. So I've made it so we can use the W, A, S, and D keys so that we can create some tank movement. Uh, you will notice that the camera currently doesn't follow the tank, which is something we're going to fix in this video. Um, and the uh, tank does have a rigid body on it and a collider, so it is able to push different objects out of the way. So uh, what we're going to cover is uh, making our tank shoot a projectile. Um, but first I want to start off by setting up the camera. So we have our main camera here and I want to set up the main camera so that it kind of follows the tank. Now I don't want to parent the camera to the tank like this because if I do this and we're moving left and right that's I don't know it becomes a little disorienting um, depending on the type of game that you're creating. So uh, what we're going to do instead is we're going to unparent this and we're going to create a script that just makes the camera follow the movement but it doesn't actually uh, rotate with the camera. Something else we're going to do if we haven't done it in the previous videos or if you haven't done it is our tank parent. Uh, we want to make sure that this is tagged as player. And we're going to create some other tags by going down into the uh, tag editor here and we're going to be able to add some other tags for uh, other parts that we're going to be doing. But first let's get started on this um, this next script. So the next script is going to be our uh, follow player position script. That's what I'm naming it. So we'll just right click and we'll go to our uh, create new script and we're going to do follow player so our player POS for position. And so this is why it's important for us to tag um, to tag our our uh, player. All right, so we're going to start off, and we're going to create two variables. Uh, our first variable is going to be a, and we're just going to make this a public game object. So public game object, and this is going to be of the type or of the name player. So that's what we're going to name it, and color on there should be changing. Hopefully everything's okay. We'll just make sure. Uh, and then the next one is going to be public. And this is going to be a float. We're going to name it zoom. And we're going to set it to by default equal. Uh, we'll just go with 10 for now. So 10.0f and semicolon. Alright, so for start, what we're going to do in start is we're going to uh, define what our player is. So we're going to say player and we're going to say that equals game object. That's weird. I have no idea why it's not. It's really strange. It shouldn't normally find a uh, game object here, but um, we'll see if something weird is going on. So I'm going to say find game object find um, game object with tag normally I don't have to type this much because I can just search it in my list and we're going to say we're going to find the object so we're gonna put a uh, string in here that's why we have the two uh, quotes and we're gonna say player equals game object find object with tag player. So that's going to um, automatically find our player and set it at this variable called play uh, player. Okay, so then on update what we're going to do is we're going to uh, transform the um, camera's uh, position so that it follows the player's position. So we're going to say transform dot position equals and that's going to equal a new vector 3. And so in our vector 3, it's going to be looking for an x, y, and a z value. So for our x, we're going to tell it to follow the, uh, 
player dot transform dot x and we separate all of these x, y, and z values with commas. So we'll say transform uh, dot x for the x and then for the y we're going to have player dot transform uh, excuse me, just realized I forgot transform position. That's important. Transform position dot x and player dot transform dot position dot y. And on top of y we're going to tell it to not only get the y position but add to it our zoom number, our zoom variable. Um, so this will allow us to have our camera follow but since we're in the y direction, we're above our tank, we'll be able to zoom the camera out uh, based on, you know, the number, the 10 value there. And then finally we'll have player.transform.position and .z. So this is getting our, and it's a long one here, but we're going to get our vector 3, so our player transform position x our player transform position y plus zoom and our player transform position uh, dot z so we'll go ahead and save that and I always do save all and it's still really weird I don't, I don't know why game object and stuff I'm not getting any errors uh, so hopefully everything's okay we'll go ahead and minimize and let's see here the name Zoom does not exist in the current context. Zoom. Oh, typos. You gotta watch for those. Okay. And shouldn't be missing anything there. So we'll do save all again. And we'll go back. There we go. Yeah, you gotta watch typos. Um, that can easily happen. So we're going to take follow player position. We're going to drop this on our main camera. And so our main camera, there's a uh, slot here in our inspector for game object. Now I've made it public so that we can see this go in here. Um, so we can go at, see it go in the inspector. So we're going to see our uh, tank there. And as I move around now, we can see that we follow the position of the tank but we do not follow the rotation so that gives us this top-down view this is kinda like if you think about the very old um, Grand Theft Auto games that were like top-down uh, they kind of work this way um, where the camera is just kinda following um, along but not the rotation uh, and then the other thing is I can mess around with the zoom so if I turn off maximize on play and I can take the zoom value here and I can change that to whatever I want the player to be able to see so we'll just set that back to 10 since that's the default alright so that's one script out of the way um, the next part is going to um, let us control our uh, tank uh, its turret so that we can rotate it um, So. I'm going to go ahead and close Visual Studio just to make sure it can refresh and everything's working here. So I'm going to right click, I'm going to create a new C -sharp script and I will name this scroll turret. So this is going to allow me to use the scroll wheel to rotate the um, turret. So I'll open that up, Visual Studio will have to reopen and hopefully it will reopen nicely for me. Um, there we go, perfect. Okay, so hopefully it does everything I need it to do. Alright, so for this we're also going to create two variables. So we're just going to drop down here and we're going to go public float scroll and we're going to say public float scroll speed and I'm going to set that to equal uh, 90 can't remember if 90 was too fast I oh, will go with 90 we'll see how it looks 
All right, so uh, public float scroll speed. So we'll have one that'll be our scroll and one that'll be our speed for our scroll. Um, we do not, however, need uh, to use uh, void start. So we'll just go down to update and we're going to define scroll. And scroll is going to equal our input. Oh, there we go. Now everything's popping up. Good. Dot get axis. So if we go back to Unity, we can see under Edit, Project Settings, Input, we have these axes here. And they're defined by different names, but there's one called Mouse Scroll Wheel. And it gets the scroll wheel information from the mouse, as it sounds. So we're going to, in this area, define a string called mouse space scroll wheel spelled exactly like that and another quotation so that will make scroll equal to the scroll wheel input and then down below <coughs> we can do transform so we're affecting its rotation so we're going to say transform rotate and we will define the rotate here as a vector 3 dot up so our up direction is our y we want to rotate around our y multiplied by sc scroll multiplied by our scroll speed Oops, let's spell everything right here also so we don't get any more errors um, and that should do it for that so we'll go ahead and do save all and we'll pop back over to unity hopefully we get no errors <coughs> everything looks good so we're just gonna go ahead and put scroll turret so my tank has the turret as a separate object and I've made sure in 3ds max when I've exported this to align um, it should be aligned um, my objects so that my Y is up and so I'm going to take my scroll turret script drop it right on the turret and I'll go ahead and turn maximize back on And so now when I hit play if I scroll I can control my turret by scrolling uh, forward it'll go to the right by scrolling left it'll go to the left or scrolling back it'll go to the left and that works independently of everything here so I can do this separately which is nice this is just like one setup that you could have um, you could change it so that it follows the mouse around you know whatever you want to do it's just what I decided to do with my game alright so the next part is setting up our uh, projectile movement so in this case my projectile is just simply going to be a sphere I didn't um, make any 3d models of it so I'm going to just create a new game object, 3D object, sphere. And I'm just going to move that out of the way for a second. I'll move that up. Okay, so this is huge. It's not going to shoot out of there. So we want to make this a little smaller. I'm going to try 0.25 for the scale. And that looks a little better. It's still a little too big to come out of there, but that's fine. That's much more manageable. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just turn the tank off for a second here. And I'm going to go back to our sphere, which I'm going to name. So I'll just call this uh, projectile. And I'm going to tag this object. So I'm going to add a new tag. And I'm going to call this player projectile. So I'll come back to my projectile and I will tag it player projectile. So this will come in handy later when we're um, uh, in the next video I'll be creating some enemies for us to shoot at so this will help the enemies know that they're getting specifically hit by a player projectile rather than some other object. Um, so I'm gonna reset my position here to zero 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 because when I have this object spawn, I want to make sure that it spawns um, from the same point as the um, spawn point. So 
I want to make sure that this is all zeroed out so it doesn't spawn like slightly off centered or something like that. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and create a new script. And this one will just be called projectile move or projectile movement. Projectile movement. Spell everything right there. Good. And we'll just double click that to open it. Let's try that again. There we go. I'm just going to say reload all. All right, so uh, for this one, we're going to create a public float. Public float called thrust. And that's going to equal 150.0f. Now, if you're working at a different scale, if your objects are much larger, uh, you might have to mess around with these numbers a little bit more. Um, so for this one, I don't need update because I'm going to do some stuff with the physics and I want that all to happen here one time and start. So I want it to uh, fire off. So what we're going to do is we're going to call on the object's rigid body. Now I have to go back to Unity and I have to make sure that my projectile has a rigid body, which it does not. So I want to give it two things. I want to give it a component, physics, rigid body. And we'll go ahead and let it be affected by gravity. Uh, so as this one shoots, it'll kind of hit stuff and fall to the ground. And I want to give it component, physics, sphere collider. Oh, you know what? Uh, as a default object, that it already has a sphere collider on it. So uh, we're, we're good there. Uh, so I don't have to do that. Um, so we have the rigid body. So now we can call on that rigid body in the script. And the way we do that is by using get component. So I'm going to say get component. And you can define this as um, up here as a uh, variable. But since I'm only using one one time, uh, I'm going to do that just directly here. So I'm going to say get component rigid body. So nice that it's now finishing my stuff for me. And we're going to say add force. So we'll add and drop down to add force here. And inside of add force, we are going to define this as transform dot forward. So our forward direction is our y direction. So if we come back here, we can see this is our y direction. So when this object is created, it will fly that direction. So I'll just come back over here. So transform forward. Um, that's going to be multiplied times thrust. And we are going to define a force mode. So we're going to use force mode dot impulse. And that basically, if we highlight over this, it says add an instant force impulse to the rigid body it uses its mass. So the heavier I make this object, the more force it's going to have um, flying out of here. So um, that'll be um, basically it for making the projectile move forward. So we're going to say File, Save All, come back to Unity, and Default Game Object Tag Player already registered. Projectile Movement.cs Error. Oh, whoops, forgot our semicolon there. Silly me. Save all. Yep, you always have to make sure you get everything. Wait for that to update. There we go. All right, so we have our projectile movement. I'm going to drop that on there. So we have our thrust down there. So I'm just going to go ahead and move this back up and back. I'm going to turn off maximize here. So I'm going to hit play and we should see it rocket forward. Yeah. So it goes forward, uh, which is good. So I'll just go ahead and reset this back to 0 and 0. And I'm going to make a prefab out of this. So I've already got some prefabs started here. I have one from a, uh, I deleted everything from here uh, earlier. So I could show you it anew. But um, let's go ahead and just, I'll delete the one I have here. So I'm just going to take this, drag this down, 
and it'll create my uh, prefab, which means I can delete that one out of my scene. So the next thing we need to do is create a spawn projectile um, script, but first we need to pick out where is our object actually going to spawn from. So I'll turn my tank back on here, and I'm going to create um, an object that will spawn um, our projectile. So I'm going to go to Game Object, Create Empty, and I will name this Projectile uh, Spawner. And I'm just going to reset all the um, reset the transform there. And this object will fire off in the Z direction. So I want to make sure this arrow is pointed this way. I'm going to make sure I have pivot and local set up here so I know exactly what direction it's on here. And I'm going to rotate this, uh, let's see, yeah, around the X direction. So I'm going to rotate it negative 10 because when I made my tank and I made the turret here, I made the turret at negative 10. So I'm just going to put this out in front, just kind of center it up, and I'm going to parent that to the turret. So that'll move right along with it. So now we need to create a script for that. What? It's weird. I'm getting like errors that really have nothing to do with anything here and I'm not certain why. Let's see if that pops up again. Yeah, I don't know. My scripts all still work. I don't know. Weird things are happening. Alright, so we're going to create our next script. So we'll just right click Create C Sharp Script and we're going to name this Spawn Projectile And we'll open that up. I'm going to say reload all. And we're going to create one variable. And we'll just make this a public game object. Projectile. And we don't need... start for this. So everything will happen here in update. So what we're going to do is we're going to write an if statement that's just going to look for uh, us pressing a button and then it will spawn our um, object based on that. So we'll say if and we'll do open and close parentheses, open and close curly brackets, I always do that first just to make sure I have all of that just so I don't you know mess anything up because that happens so I'm gonna say input so we're looking for another input and we're gonna use get whoops get button down so there's get button get button down and get button up so get button down uh, only happens when the button is pressed down uh, get button is as long as the button is pressed down so if I'm holding the button, it's going to be firing thousands of these objects, which I don't want. And then there's get button up, which only happens once I've released the button. So we're going to use get button down, and it's going to look for a name in here of the button, always between two uh, parentheses, or um, uh, quotation marks. And this one's going to be jump, which is in Unity defined. Uh, the jump button input is set up for the space bar. So, um, but I also want to give the ability to use uh, left click. So I'm going to say if input get button down jump or, so this is the way we write or, input dot get button down. And for left click, we're going to use fire one. So fire one is also set up to default to the spacebar or to the um, left click on your mouse. Alright, so if we press spacebar or left click, what will we do? So uh, to spawn something we're going to use 
instantiate. So there's instantiate. And then it's going to look for uh, what do we instantiate. So under instantiate, the first uh, part here uh, has the uh, object. Then we have a vector 3 position and a rotation. So the object that we are going to create is going to be the projectile. So whatever is in the projectile slot is what will get fired out. And we want to fire this from our spawn points transform dot position. And the rotation will be the object's transform dot rotation. Okay. Uh, that's it. Um, so we'll go ahead and save all. And we're here on the spawn projectile. So we're going to see a projectile slot open up here while I have the script um, assigned. So what I can do is go into prefabs and I can drag my prefab into there. And by default, it's going to use this anytime I'm using this projectile um, script. So I can take this script and I'll apply that to my uh, projectile spawner. And see it's defaulting to that object that I put. I should really save this. So we'll just save the scene. Tank and boxes and guns. It's a good name. Alright, so go ahead and test this out. So let's go ahead and full screen that. So if I left click, and those are coming out really fast. So I'm going to go to my projectile prefab, and I'm going to turn this down. Actually, I'm going to change its mass to 10, which should also slow it down. And I want to make sure my tank. Okay, so it is a mass of 50, so that's fine. I want to make sure my tank's mass was heavier. All right, yeah, that's a lot better. So the mass um, changes. So if I scroll, you can see that I can knock these boxes over because the boxes I think are set at like one mass, and I can just rotate back to the beginning here and fire off that way. But now there's a new problem. Um, my projectiles, they continue to stay on forever. So if I don't maximize here and I hit play, also I can use the space bar. So you can see we're adding all these cloned objects to the scene. And as you can imagine, at some point that's going to slow down our game. So we got one more script to write for this tutorial and then uh, we'll move on to the next tutorial video if you um, continue watching that is. So I'm going to go back to scripts and I'm going to write a script that I'm calling delayed death. Delayed death. And we'll open that up. Let's do reload all. So for this one, we have two variables that we're going to add. Our first one is going to be a public float. And this will be called die after time. And we'll set that to equal 10.0f. So that's going to be uh, basically after 10 seconds, it dies. Um, we actually do not need start. So we'll just get rid of start and on update oh sorry one more variable I did say there were going to be two um, this one's not going to be public this one is just going to be float timer equals 0, 0.0 f and so now on update we're going to say timer equals uh, sorry, timer equals, yeah, no, I had that right. There's two different ways we can write this. I was going to write it the shorter way. Timer plus time dot 
delta time. So what that means is that um, basically every second it's going to add one to the timer. The other way we can write this, the shorthand version, just to clean this up a little, would be plus equals. So this would be timer plus equals time dot delta time. It's a little bit shorter, a little bit cleaner, um, but maybe it doesn't make as much sense to people who are new to scripting. And then down below here, we're going to have an if statement. We're going to say if. So we add our brackets. And we say if timer is greater than die after time, then we will destroy. And what are we destroying? We are destroying game object. So it's destroying itself. And that's it. So we'll save that. Come back to Unity. And we'll apply this to our prefab. So I'll just select projectile down here. And I can go down to the bottom here and just say add component, scripts, delayed death. And then it shows me my time there. So I have this here so that I can easily just change this. So if I want it to die after five seconds, I can just type that in. So I hit play. And so after 10 seconds, we should see these start to go away, which might be a long time to let them linger on screen. But there we go. And they disappear. So again, you can change this time to whatever you want. You know, If you want it to disappear after five seconds, five seconds might be better for you. There they go. All right, so that wraps it up for um, the uh, projectile spawning tutorial. Uh, hopefully I'll come up with a better name uh, for it when I post this on YouTube. But thanks for watching. Uh, if you like this video or you like the previous four videos, please think about giving me a like. Um, leave me comments letting me know what you would like to see uh, in continuing videos. And then uh, if you like the whole series here, uh, please feel free to subscribe. Thank you for watching.